The Sunday Sermons of St. Alphonsus de Liguri, Sermon 24, for the third Sunday after Easter on the value of time. A little while, and now you shall not see me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. There is nothing shorter than time, but there is nothing more valuable. There is nothing shorter than time, because the past is no more. The future is uncertain, and the present is but a moment. This is what Jesus Christ meant when he said, A little while and you shall not see me. We may say the same of our life, which according to St. James is but a vapor, which is soon scattered forever. For what is your life? It is a vapor, which appeareth for a little while. But the time of this life is as precious as it is short. For in every moment, if we spend it well, we can acquire treasures of merits for heaven. But, if we employ time badly, we may in each moment commit sin and merit hell. I mean this day to show you how precious is every moment of the time which God gives us, not to lose it, and much less to commit sin, but to perform good works and to save our souls. Thus saith the Lord, In an acceptable time I have heard thee, and in the day of salvation I have helped thee. St. Paul explains this passage and says that the acceptable time is the time in which God has determined to confer his favors upon us. He then adds, Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. The Apostle exhorts us not to spend unprofitably the present time, which he calls the day of salvation, because perhaps after this day of salvation there shall be no salvation for us. The time, says the Apostle, is short. It remaineth that they that weep be as though they wept not, that they that rejoice as if they rejoiced not, and they that buy as though they possessed not, and they that use this world as if they used it not. Since then, the time which we have to remain on this earth is short. The Apostle tells those who weep that they ought not to weep, because their sorrows shall soon pass away. And those who rejoice not to fix their affections on their enjoyments, because they shall soon have an end. Hence he concludes that we should use this word not to enjoy its transitory goods, but to merit eternal life. Son, says the Holy Ghost, observe the time. Son, learn to preserve time, which is the most precious and the greatest gift that God can bestow upon you. St. Bernardine of Siena teaches that time is of as much value as God. Because in every moment of time well spent, the possession of God is merited. He had that in every instance of this life, a man may obtain the pardon of his sins, the grace of God, and the glory of paradise. Hence, St. Bonaventure says that no loss is of greater moment than the loss of time. But in another place, St. Bernardine says that though there is nothing more precious than time, there is nothing less valuable in the estimation of men. You will see some persons spending four or five hours in play. If you ask them why they lose so much time, they answer, to amuse ourselves. Others remain half the day standing in the street or looking out from a window. If you ask them what they are doing, they shall say in reply that they are passing the time. And why, says the same saint, do you lose this time? Why should you lose even a single hour which the mercy of God gives you to weep for your sins and to acquire the divine grace? Oh, time despised by men during life, how much shall you be desired at the hour of death? and particularly in the other world. Time is a blessing which we enjoy only in this life. It is not enjoyed in the next. It is not found in heaven nor in hell. 
And how the damned exclaim with tears, Oh, that an hour were given to us. They would pay any price for an hour or for a minute in which they might repair their eternal ruin. But this hour or minute they shall never have. In heaven there is no weeping. But were the saints capable of sorrow, all their wailing should arise from the thought of having lost in this life the time in which they could have acquired greater glory. And from the conviction that this time shall never more be given to them. A deceased Benedictine nun appeared in glory to a certain person and said that she was in heaven and in the enjoyment of perfect happiness but that if she could desire anything it would be to return to life and to suffer affliction in order to merit an increase of glory and she added that to acquire the glory which corresponded to a single Ave Maria she would be content to suffer till the day of judgment the long and painful sickness which brought on her death Hence, St. Francis Borgia was careful to employ every moment of his time for God. When others spoke of useless things, he conversed with God by holy affections. And so recollected was he that when asked his opinion on the subject of conversation, he knew, what, knew not what answer to make. Being corrected for this, he said, I am content to be considered stupid rather than lose my time and vanities. Some of you will say, What evil am I doing? Is it not, I ask, an evil to spend your time in plays, in conversations, and useless occupations, which are unprofitable to the soul? Does God give you this time to lose it? Let not, says the Holy Ghost. Yes. The part of a good gift overpass thee. The workmen of whom St. Matthew speaks did no evil. They only lost time by remaining idle in the streets. But they were rebuked by the father of the family saying, Why stand you here all the day idle? On the day of judgment, Jesus Christ shall demand an account, not only of every month and day that has been lost, but even of every idle word. Every idle word that men shall speak. They shall render an account for it on the day of judgment. He shall likewise demand an account of every moment of the time which you shall lose. According to St. Bernard, all time which is not spent for God is lost time. Hence the Holy Ghost says, Whatsoever thy hand is able to do, do it earnestly. For neither work nor reason shall be in hell whither thou art hastening. What can you do today defer not till tomorrow for on tomorrow you may be dead and may be gone into another world where you shall have no more time to do good and where you shall only enjoy the reward of your virtues or suffer the punishment due to your sins today if you shall hear his voice harden not your hearts God calls you to confess your sins, to restore your gotten goods, and to be reconciled with your enemies. Obey his call today to be reconciled with your enemies. For it may happen that on tomorrow time may be no more for you, or that God will call you no more. All our salvation depends on corresponding with the divine calls and at the time that God calls us. But some of you will perhaps say, I am young. After some time I will give myself to God. But remember that the Gospel tells us that Jesus Christ cursed the fig tree, which he found without fruit, although the season for figs had not yet arrived. It was not the time for figs. By this the Savior wished to signify that man at all times, even in youth, should produce fruits of good works and that otherwise, like the fig tree, he shall be cursed, and shall produce no fruit for the future. May no man hereafter eat any more fruit of thee forever. Delay not to be converted to the Lord, and defer it not from day to day, for his wrath shall come on a sudden. 
If you find your soul in the state of sin, delay not your repentance, nor your confession. Do not put off then, till tomorrow, what you should, should do today. For if you do not obey the voice of God, calling you today to confess your sins, death may this day overtake you in sin, and tomorrow there may be no hope of salvation for you. The devil regards the whole of our life as very short, and therefore he loses not a moment of time, but tempts us day and night. The devil has come down unto you having great wrath, knowing that he hath but a short time. The enemy then never loses time in seeking to bring us to hell. And shall we squander the time which God has given us to save our souls? You say, I will hereafter give myself to God. But why, answers St. Bernard, do you, a miserable sinner, presume on the future as if the Father placed time in your power? Why do you presume that you will hereafter give yourself to God as if he had given you the time and opportunity of returning to him whenever you wish? Job said with trembling that he knew not whether another moment of his life remained. For I know not how long I shall continue and whether after a while my maker may take me away. And you say I will not go to confession Today I will think of it tomorrow? (laughs) How can you promise yourself another day when you know not whether you shall live for another hour? If, as St. Teresa says, you are not prepared to die today, tremble lest you die an unhappy death. St. Bernadine weeps over the blindness of those negligent Christians who squander over the days of salvation and never consider that a day once lost shall never return. At the hour of death they shall wish for another year or for another day, but they shall not have it. They shall then be told that time shall be no more. What price would they not then give for another week, for a day or for even an hour to prepare the account which they must then render to God? St. Lawrence Justinian says that for a single hour they would give all their property, all their honors and all their delights. But this hour shall not be granted to them. The priest who attends them shall say, Depart. Depart immediately from this earth, for your time is no more. Go forth, Christian soul, from this world. What will it profit the sinner who has led an irregular life to exclaim at death, Oh, that I had led a life of sanctity. Oh, that I had spent my years in loving God. How great is the anguish of a traveler who, when the night has fallen, perceives that he has missed the way and that there is no more time to correct his mistake. Such shall be the anguish at death of those who have lived many years in the world, but have not spent them for God. The night cometh when no man can work. Hence the Redeemer says to all, Walk whilst you have light, that the darkness overtake you not. Walk in the way of salvation, now that you have the light, before you are surprised by the darkness of death in which you can do nothing. You can then only weep over the time which you have lost. He hath called me against the time. At the hour of death, conscience will remind us of all the time which we have had to become saints, and which we have employed in multiplying our debts to God. He will remind us of all the calls and of all the graces which he has given us to make use, to make us love him, and which we have abused. At that awful moment, We shall also see that the way to salvation is closed forever. In the midst of these remorses, and of all the torturing darkness of death, the dying sinner shall say, O fool that I have been, O life misspent! O lost years in which I could have gained treasures of merits, and have become a saint! But I have neglected both, and now the time of saving my soul is gone forever. But of what use shall these wailings and lamentations be when the scene of this world is about to close, the lamp is on the point of being extinguished, and when the dying Christian has arrived at that great moment on which eternity depends? Be you then also ready, for at what hour you think the Son of Man will come. The Lord says, Be prepared. He does not tell us to prepare ourselves when death approaches. 
but to be ready for his coming. Because when we think least of death, the Son of Man shall come into man in the count of our whole life. In the confusion of death, it will be most difficult to adjust our accounts, so as to appear guiltless before the tribunal of Jesus Christ. Perhaps death may not come upon us for 20 or 30 years, but it may also come very soon, perhaps in a year or in a month. If anyone had reason to fear that a trial should take place on which his very life depended, he would certainly not wait for the day of the trial, but would as soon as possible employ an advocate to plead his cause. And what do we do? We know for certain that we must one day be judged and that on the result of that judgment our eternal, not our temporal life depends. We also know that one day may be very near at hand. And still we lose our time. And instead of adjusting our accounts, we go on multiplying the crimes which will merit for us the sentence of eternal death. If then we have hitherto employed our time in offending God, let us henceforth endeavor to bewail our misfortune for the remainder of our life, and say continually with the penitent king Ezekiel, I will recount to thee all my years in the bitterness of my soul. The Lord gives us the remaining days of life that we may compensate the time that has been badly spent. Whilst we have time, let us work good. Let us not provoke the Lord to punish us by an unhappy death. And if during the years that are past we have been foolish and have offended him, let us now attend to the apostle exhorting us to be wise for the future and to redeem the time we have lost. See therefore, brethren, now you walk circumspectly, not as unwise, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days of evil, understanding what is the will of God. The days are evil. According to St. Anselm, the meaning of these words is that the days of this life are evil, because in them we are exposed to a thousand temptations and dangers of eternal misery. And therefore, to escape perdition, all possible care is necessary. What says St. Augustine is meant by redeeming the time, unless, when necessary, to submit to temporal loss in order to gain eternal goods. We should live only to fulfill with all diligence the divine will. And should it be necessary, it is better to suffer in temporal things than to neglect our eternal interests. Oh, how well did St. Paul redeem the time which he had lost. St. Jerome says that though the last of the apostles he was on the account of his labors the first in merit. Paul the last in order but the first in merit because he labored more than all. Let us consider that in each moment we may lay up greater treasures of eternal goods. If the possession of all the land round which you could walk or of all the money which you could count in a day were promised you Would you lose time, or would you not instantly begin to walk over the ground or reckon the money? You now have it in your power to acquire, in each moment, eternal treasures. And will you, notwithstanding, notwithstanding, misspend your time? Do not say that what you can do today, you can also do tomorrow. Because this day shall then be lost to you and shall never return. You have this day, but tomorrow perhaps will not be given to you. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. St. Alphonsus to the Gary, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.